Hi, Mr. Sonnenberg here. We are looking at um, general outcome 2, specific outcome 2.1. We are identifying caustic materials, the dangers of caustic materials, um, both in school and in the household. Uh, again, this is matter, the unit matter and chemical change, grade 9 science. So today we're going to talk about WMS and, and these caustic materials. And remember, caustic materials are things that can burn, things that uh, can corrode and eat away at materials. Um, so we have to understand safe handling. So we'll do the first part, we'll talk WMS, and then the there will be another screencast that is uh, safety in the science lab, which is important for us to know. Okay, so we have this this uh, uh, safety system that's set up with symbols, and these products we can see at school or even outside school at home. Uh, th this uh, safety system is called uh, WMIS, so it's the Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System. So what does WMIS provide for us? Well, it provides us inf information through the labels on containers uh, using uh, images to uh, identify the level of danger, um, information about the product and such. Uh, also through MSDS sheets uh, for each controlled product, it's going to give a very thorough explanation of the information that we need to be aware of uh, with each uh, each. Um, substance we use or product. So there's actually two uh, binders by the teacher's desk in our classroom that are full of MSDS sheets for any of the chemicals or products that we use uh, in the science lab. And then there's science education information. So the first symbol, we're going to talk about the symbols of WMIS. Uh, the first one is is biohazardous. So Basically, this is uh, there's toxins that it could affect the body and cause disease. Um, so sometimes we'll see this at the hospital. Um, so the example is a blood sample containing the hepatitis B virus is biohazardous infectious material. Okay, um, so if we're exposed to that. Um, it could uh, it could affect us. So there has to be safe handling with these materials. Sometimes you'll see uh, with needles and such at the hospital. And then there's a, uh, a biohazardous sticker on a bin, and that's for safe handling of these materials. So uh, things that are biohazardous might be an example, be the flesh-eating disease. The next symbol is corrosive. So... This is the second most common found in North America. A lot of products, uh, basically things that corrode or they eat away, uh, maybe metals or they cause uh, permanent damage to our human tissues. So, such as the skin, or uh, if there's eye contact, it causes burning, scarring, blinding. Um, and the thing is, these corrosive materials sometimes can be so strong uh, they can cause metal containers, structural materials to become weak leak or collapse and then cause further damage so uh, things uh, just a couple examples are bleach and uh, hydrochloric acid so the next symbol we're going to discuss is flammable okay um, see this quite frequently as well um, these are things that are going to ignite and then they continue to burn if they're exposed to a flame or any source of ignition uh, the materials Okay, uh, we see here this uh, flammable gas that can be classified as uh, flammable liquids, uh, combustible liquids, flammable solid, reactive flammable material. Uh, so these are things like oil, uh, gasoline, they're flammable materials. Okay, so the next symbol we're going to look at is compressed gas. I apologize, it's over top of the symbol, uh, but compressed gas. Okay, uh, is basically this gas is under room temperature, is under pressure, and it's pressurized in such a way that uh, if we were to expose it to possibly extreme heat 
or um, if there was some form of rupturing to the um, to the object, what could happen was is we could have uh, an explosion and then the object would become a projectile. So safety purposes under compressed gases, uh, we want to try to keep it at room temperature, um, just and make sure that uh, we're obviously not puncturing or uh, causing any problems um, to the exterior of the container. So these things like uh, propane um, or oxygen tanks, they're compressed gases. Okay, now what we have is an oxidizing material. So uh, materials may or may not burn itself, but will release oxygen um, or another oxidizing substance. So it can cause or distribute to the combustion of another material. So these are things that can cause other things to combust and burst into flame and burn these oxidizing materials. So they're typically, uh, we need to store them in uh, special containers and we, we take extreme care when we're, we're handling or transporting these. So things like chlorine or nitrogen dioxide, okay, these will actually are highly reactive and they can support a fire. Then we have poisonous. Uh, so they cause this causes immediate and serious toxic effects. Uh, this is the most common symbol you find in homes. Um, it's found in a lot of materials, especially materials you probably find under your sink or in your cleaning closet. Um, if we ingest these, so if we swallow them, uh, they can be immediately toxic, very lethal, and uh, extremely dangerous. So things like Mr. Clean, bleach, Tide, cyanide, rat poisoning, very toxic. And we find this in our household uh, for all the time, these, these materials. So uh, things to look out for is that poisonous is extremely dangerous. So dangerously reactive is the next symbol we'll find in the Wemyss uh, in the Wemyss program. So uh, these chemicals they're mixed uh, when they're mixed or undergo vigorous reactions, uh, they can produce harmful side effects. So uh, they react violently, and that's really important. So if there's any kind of shock or increase in pressure or temperature, they may react vigorously with water, and maybe they'll release a toxic gas. So they just, they're highly reactive um, if we add certain conditions. So like I said, shock of some sort, um, that pressure is severely increased or the temperature is severely increased uh, or decreased in change, then we get these very, very reactive and, and dangerous effects. So uh, we shouldn't... Uh, shouldn't be mixing bleach and drain cleaner and ammonia because when they're combined they form a toxic gas uh, which becomes uh, very dangerous with so be careful when we're using cleaning products that we understand the combinations and what's dangerous and what not now toxic okay uh, so this can cause other toxic effects these materials okay so we take a pure substance and a mixture or a mixture um, and so uh, mix them together and, and what we can get are uh, uh, some slower effects that cause damage to our body. So things such as asbestos or nicotine, so let's say with cigarettes, nicotine causes those long-term effects on the body. Uh, we don't notice it immediately, but it's causing some severe damage to our body. And these are toxic materials. So... Um, we're, we're going to end there um, with the Wemyss section um, and uh, so you can use these notes uh, if, if you please to uh, take lecture notes down. Um, the next video that I'll be posting will be on science lab safety. That's more for um, not necessarily covering any of the general outcomes so much of the knowledge based outcomes but it is going to definitely be extremely important as we move through and uh, complete more lab activities. I know we've touched base on this earlier in the year, but it's important to touch base on it again and cover the fact that, or cover the outcome. So we were talking about uh, um, understanding caustic materials uh, and uh, their, their dangers and uh, being able to work with them, especially in the household or in the school environment. So, uh, Hopefully this has helped you to better understand uh, safe handling of materials and 
uh, what type of information to look for um, with regards to the women's program.